the ball player was not immune to cultural issues of religion, politics, labor relations, protest, and resistance. So their creativity, their fortitude, entrepreneurship, and perseverance uh, have had a great impact on American culture. Now, the Neighbor League Baseball Museum strives to broaden the audience for this history by facilitating marketing efforts, research efforts, traveling exhibitions, and educational programming. An example of such programming is Shades of Greatness, art inspired by Negro Leagues Baseball, which was created in 2003. Shades stands as one of the most popular art exhibitions showcasing Negro Leagues Baseball history. And a number of pieces, uh, prints of pieces from the Shades uh, exhibition are on display downstairs in the museum. So you get an even better example of it. And through the artwork uh, from the exhibit and historical photographs, I want to give you uh, some highlights of the important people and places related to black baseball history. But to get our minds around this large subject, and I think it is a large subject, I suggest re reviewing the history using what I call the four T's. Times, towns, teams, and talent. The times, uh, we focus on the historical context in which baseball events took place. Towns, the geography and demographics of the communities uh, which hosted baseball teams. With teams, a close examination of baseball organizations and competition as business structures and as contributors to their community. And the talent will focus on individual stories, and mostly of the athletes, but also of owners, family members, journalists, and other contributors. Let's start with the times. Uh, I like to use the time period, a 100 year time period of 1860 to 1960. Uh, and this is a time of dynamic change in American history. Uh, this slide highlights just a few of the major events. Uh, the nation uh, and its people are experiencing tremendous change, growth in size, growth in population, conflict at home and abroad. It is in this time we witness America becoming the world's great superpower, and in many respects, cultural beacon. Most relevant to the discussion of baseball, however, are the mass immigration of Europeans uh, to the United States and the great migration of African Americans to major urban centers. That, of course, includes African Americans moving uh, from rural to urban areas across the country, especially from the south to the north, uh, northern states during this time period after Reconstruction. It is in this landscape in which the leisure sport of baseball evolves from a country club sport uh, and a college game to an organized amusement industry played uh, on many skill levels and wildly popular among uh, many ethnic groups in the United States. We see here just a few of the cities and towns where baseball was tied to industry and community identity. Uh, for example, in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, one of the major industries was iron, uh, iron uh, factories. Uh, part of the social welfare of the companies was to have baseball teams for their employees. And they, were, and, do, and they sometimes used the baseball teams to recruit uh, workers. Or maybe you recruited, uh, because it was such a, a sense of community pride to have a good company baseball team, you recruited baseball players and you gave them a job maybe just sweeping the floor and not working the iron so that you knew that you had a good baseball player for your team. <laughs> but they had a team for the white employees, they had a team for the black employees. But because of segregation laws, they were never allowed to play against each other. However, the remnants of the black baseball team from that from one of the major iron companies became uh, the Birmingham Black Barons, which was one of the first uh, southern teams to participate in the professional Negro Leagues. Same thing in Pittsburgh. Uh, the YMCA's uh, were very much uh, involved in the black community, as well as uh, the steel companies, and they had baseball teams uh, that were part of their their uh, their social fabric. African Americans observed in various forms of what would become baseball as slaves. And there's new research that's being discovered to show black participation in the game, maybe even as early as the 1850s. By the time of the Civil War, African Americans were mastering the game and moved to play on military teams, college teams, independent teams, and even the developing professional major leagues, as they were being called in the late 1800s. This is Moses Walker. And he was among the first blacks to play in those uh, early major leagues. He was a graduate of Oberlin College in Ohio. And he played for the professional club in Toledo, Ohio for several years. 
There were a handful of other blacks in the, in the high level or second uh, tier minor leagues uh, as well. However, racial attitudes and segregation of laws ultimately forced them out. There was never a written rule that prevented black players from participating in these leagues, just collusion, uh, a so-called gentleman's agreement, uh, where team owners stopped recruiting and signing players. And by 1900, there were no blacks in the major leagues. So black baseball enthusiasts uh, moved to form their own teams with limited success. There were great independent teams like the St. Paul, Minnesota Colored Gophers, uh, shown here interpreted by artist Robert Hurst. Uh, but trying to manage a baseball team uh, uh, in segregated society was incredibly challenging. Some teams did have company or private sponsorship, but they were the exceptions. Most independent teams fought for players and struggled for stability. A business structure or a league structure uh, was proposed in order to bring stability to black baseball. Uh, spurred on by the black press, key leaders of black baseball teams met in Kansas City, Missouri at this YMCA facility on the Pasale Boulevard uh, to hammer out the creation of the first successful black league in February of 1920, 90 years ago this month. Um, quick note about this YMCA. This was the black YMCA in Kansas City on Pasale Boulevard. Uh, the unique history of this YMCA is that it was built in 1914, uh, built uh, through a challenge grant by philanthropist Julius Rosenwald. Uh, Rosenwald, I understand, is tied to the Sears and Roebuck family fortune. A Jewish man who enjoyed uh, the mission of the YMCA. Uh, but Rosenwald also had the tradition of doing similar challenge grants all across the South, mostly in North Carolina and Tennessee and that region, of building schools in black communities. If the community could raise part of the money, he would give the rest. The same challenge went out to the black community in Kansas City. If they wanted a YMCA, he put up, I think, about $25,000 if the community could raise the rest. I think the total cost of the building was around seventy-five dollars to $85,000, and the community raised $50,000. And the building was erected in 1914. It is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and it still stands today uh, at the corner of near 19th and Pasea. It is the uh, museum's hope uh, to restore this building and turn it into a research and education center. Um, initial costs for that were $15 million. So uh, we're still uh, de uh, developing plans to do that, but we need more space in order to be able to provide research services for folks. So, and to save this building because it is outside of the general redevelopment that has happened in the 18th and Vine District and is, and is in much need of repair. Now, play in the newly formed Negro National League, as I mentioned, which began in the spring of 1920. Uh, with the arrival of new leagues, uh, new teams and players, and ups and downs, there was an economic depression in the 30s, uh, there was segregated travel, they, they developed all-star games, there were migrations of players uh, to and from Latin America, of course there were wars, and race riots, and everything in between. Black baseball was very popular, was very popular across the Midwest, the Northeast, and the South up through 1960. Teams emerged such as the Atlanta Black Crackers, the Cleveland Buckeyes, the New York Cubans, the Homestead Braves, and I mentioned the Birmingham Black Barons, and also the Indianapolis Clowns that, that we mentioned earlier. Uh, 30 communities hosted close to 75 teams during this time period. Each team had a unique history of failure, success, challenges, and community involvement. Black baseball is also being played internationally. 